Who's ready for a repot with me? Get your stuff together and sit down with me whilst we do some planty chores, do some repottings, and basically have a bit of a chat. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical house plants. For today's video, I don't know if you can hear how bunged up I am again, because this person right here has managed to get another cold, pretty much in less time than a month since the last time I had one, so <laughs> feeling a bit fragile at the moment. But nonetheless, it is the Easter bank holiday weekend here in the UK, and it's kind of a four day weekend. <laughs> I was hoping to do quite a few things at the allotment and in here over this weekend, but I have spent most of it on the couch feeling very sorry for myself. For today, I thought let's do a repot with me video because I've got stuff that I need to do. And I know I've heard from a lot of you that you kind of like these videos. They're a bit more off the cuff and I'll kind of talk you through what I'm doing, but also give you some like updates on different things and it, helps because I can sit down for it because I don't think I could stand up for the entirety of this video. I'm not feeling particularly great. So let me scoot you on down and let's get into it. Okay, again with all the glamorous and downwards angles, but this is the only way that I can kind of get you to see vaguely what I've got in front of me. So bear with me whilst I kind of try to make this work. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be looking at doing today, and I'm trying to see if I've got the big somewhere. I do, which is to repot this orchid right here. And by repot, I mean predominantly deal with, I think at this point, most of the roots being rotted. This was a bit of a sad story after I came back from the kind of time off that I had in Greece, where I think this orchid basically had a lot of stress. It kind of tipped out of its pot whilst I was away. The lovely person that was watering me, watering the plants for me. I really can't talk today. So this is gonna be a fun video for all of us involved, basically. Um, the actual ceramic cover pot dropped down, smashed. And I think that maybe put the plant into quite a bit of stress. And it was quite root bound anyway, which I think it just agitated everything. So let's deal with that first. As always, pair of scissors and some alcohol will be my friend in terms of, I am sure I'm gonna to have to cut off quite a few roots. <laughs> so let's deal with this. And I know before anybody else says it, because I also follow Sarah, the plant rescuer. I know I don't need to stake my orchids, but I've got too many on a windowsill and if I didn't stake them, it would all just get a bit, ugh. So just to prove that I'm not lying in terms of root rot, most of those roots are horrendous at the moment. So I think there might be a couple that are salvageable, maybe. Let's see about taking this off. I'm being really forceful with this because I can see that every single one of the roots at the bottom are pretty much mush. So I wouldn't normally be quite so... <laughs> rough with the actual pot as well. Let me just see, because I've got a net, I've got uh, one of the orchid pots and I've got it into this black container. I think that might be better because this can actually then sit a bit better within that pot. So yes, I think I'm gonna be repotting into that. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and loosen everything up whilst dropping everything that's in there. This is disgusting. I should probably be wearing gloves, but at this point, there's so many germs in and around me. Also realizing the yellow might have not been the best option today, but you know, you live, you learn. Yeah, most of, most, uh, most of this is rotted basically. So let's, let's deal with this. But yeah, just to also kind of update what I think is likely gonna happen this week is this might be the only video and I'll bring it out on the Sunday just to give me some time to uh, be able to edit it. Because I don't think I have actually really ever talked about kind of my other line of work, which is uh, doing web design and kind of digital marketing for my clients. And you might have seen me being slightly frazzled recently and it's because work is going okay. I don't want to jinx it, but work is going really well. Um, 
the last few months has been really, really busy. There's some new clients coming on board. There's a lot of them that are basically starting the day after we all come back from the bank holiday. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a busy week. And if I try to do two edits in one week, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it because I've also lost the Monday. Because usually what I'll do, um, this is giving you a bit of a peek behind the, what's the expression, a peek behind the curtain basically, which is I tend to edit all of my videos on uh, two days basically, which is why you get them out the way that you get them out during the week, which is I will edit on Tuesday and I will edit on Thursday. And it's because, again, one of the benefits that I've got with running my own business is that those two days I've kind of blocked out in my work calendar, which means that, and I explain this to clients and they understand it, not necessarily in terms of filming for YouTube, but in terms of actually doing the work that I need to do for them, which is kind of, I need two days in the week where I'm not dealing with calls, emails. If there's anything urgent, obviously, yes, I will be dealing with that at that point. But I kind of learned this from a friend years ago who is, um, still is a developer, actually, a web designer, um, or web developer, I know it's technically different, um, where they were saying every time they have to stop doing something to answer anybody's question, however valid that question might be, it then takes you twice as long to get back into things. So I kind of found that to be entirely true when I was setting up my own business. So I was just like, okay, you know what? Let's let's explain this to the clients. And you'd be surprised that a lot of people kind of really understand it. A lot of my clients always joke, they're just like, oh, we wish we could do that with work. And I'm just like, well, ask. You never know, they might tell you, okay. I know when you work for uh, other businesses and it's not your own, you don't have quite as much autonomy as if you would if you've got your own business basically but a lot of the times you'd be surprised if you can kind of present that well enough to your bosses it does have, well sorry there might be some jump cuts in this video which is either me having to a blow my nose or a cough out a lung so apologies but yeah, so it is quite useful to have that, and that's why I do it on those two days, which is why also that you tend to get the videos on the days that you tend to get the videos. It gives me enough time to edit, potentially deal with anything if I need to deal with it um, before I kind of post the videos. And um, yeah, that's why. Tuesday I edit the video for Thursday, and Thursday I edit the video for Sunday. So yeah, and it's worked out really well for me, but sorry, this is a very long way of me saying that's the reason why I don't think there's gonna be a second video this week on Tuesday is because first day back in the office is Tuesday and I've got new clients starting specifically on that day. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get around to editing two videos and also I'm not feeling well. So the concept of me trying to film two videos today <laughs> is a bit uh, yeah, <laughs> much. But you can see quite how many roots I've lost on this plant at this point in time, and I don't know. It should be able to bounce back. All kids will occasionally do this. Usually you don't get quite so many roots that are rotted, but um, should be okay. Right. But yes, uh, I'm trying to get all the papery roots out as well in terms of like the aerial roots on this plant because if I do that, there's more of a chance that nothing's gonna go wrong when I kind of bury a lot of this into the pot because what I'm gonna have to do is bury this a bit deeper into the pot so I can get some of these aerial roots in um, a bit lower. So, that's why you're seeing me being quite so aggressive and taking out so many roots at the bottom of this plant because I know that I'm going to need that space in the pot to get these roots here further in. But, uh, yeah. This is interesting because apparently this, and I hadn't realised, because this was like a supermarket purchase, this 
This orchid is probably about seven or eight years old now. And it's fine, this is probably the third, fourth time that this has happened to it, and it always bounces back. So I'm not particularly worried about it. And you can kind of see the reason why you get those leaves and they start crinkling up a bit. That, that's usually a telltale sign that something's going wrong with the roots. It's a clear pot. I could see this happening. Did I have time to deal with it before today? No. Um, but I also knew that it wasn't hugely urgent. I know that orchids, especially Phalaenopsis orchids, can be quite forgiving when it comes to things like this. So it's not a problem. Uh, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it for right now. And all of this <laughs> is getting binned at this point, including the bark that was in there, because that's probably covered in like um, root rot. Let me get rid of this so I've got more space to work with and I'll be back. Okay, back. So I also kind of slightly cleared the container as well so that there is a bit more um, space that I can kind of use in there. Luckily, I thought I didn't have any bark, but I do actually have some uh, ninja bark, which is great. Oh, and this is good chunky bark, which is kind of what I'm gonna need for this. So making sure I'm putting a good decent layer at the bottom. Smaller bark would have been a bit useful again to try to get into nooks and crannies, but considering how little of a root system this plant has, it, yeah, it would probably be better with the bigger chunks of bark, basically. So I'm trying to see now if I can get it in a deep enough. That's what she said. Um, but, uh, sorry, <laughs> childish like jokes from me there. Um, Yeah, just making sure that I'm getting bark in all the little nooks and crannies, just also to hold the plant up. It's always entertaining trying to get the bark where it needs to be because there's a big air gap on the side there, which is fine. The orchid roots will grow into it eventually, which is fantastic. But let's have a look about getting a few bits of orchid bark there. And I think oh, that is it. Quick and dirty orchid repot for the first one. And then what I'll probably do, because again, there's not as many roots as I would like in there, I might just put like a bit of sphagnum moss around here just so it gets some moisture that way. But this is now ready to get watered in, which I will do after the video. Okay, on to the next little task that I need to do, which is, ta-da! <laughs> Comment down below who else does this, where they just use anything that they can find to just water. This is water propagations, by the way. So, yeah, so I'm just like, a vessel, uh, put it in, it's fine. But um, some of you might have seen this. I kind of like showed this a couple of weeks back, basically. And yeah, they're all doing quite well. I think most of them are rooted enough that I should be able to pot them up now, which is going to be great. But yeah, let's have a quick look. Ooh. What is happening here? Interesting. I just saw some webbing and I'm really hoping it is a spider webbing rather than spider mite webbing, but I'm not entirely sure. And as I've kept saying on previous videos, <laughs> jeweler's loop or magnifying glasses, absolutely fine, phone as well. Not entirely sure. 
I don't think it is a spider mite, which is great, actually. Uh, I will see now whilst I move around. I say this hesitantly because I've never seen or experienced what people call flat mites, but I don't know if that is a flat mite, but I don't know. Regardless, the plants need to be potted up and I will deal with figuring out what that is after they've been potted up, basically. So, I'll give you a bit of a quick tour as to what is in here and hopefully get things potted up, which this one's really interesting because out of everything, this one is one that I didn't expect to root out as much as it did, and there's something else in here which I expected to root out better, which it didn't. So this is a philodendron attenue. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. I've left a bit too much down at the bottom in terms of stem, because I was hoping it was going to root from further down. But what I will probably do is, just so I've got a bit more space to move around in the pot, uh, that gonna be, mm, let's have a look. Cause I'm gonna be using one of these pots. The clear pots with holes in them. Mm, mm, no, I will have to cut it. Under normal circumstances, I would let the cut that I'm just about to do now callous over. Am I gonna do that? No. But meh. I'll see, because I've got, this is just a propagate of my mother plant as well, and it's actually relatively well rooted. Hopefully that might come up so you can see. Um, that's okay, actually. Um, that is an old stem or a petiole, but yeah, that's doing quite, quite well. You can see me dropping everything on the, on the floor because today is my sweep the floor day, so it's fine. And to be fair, people that have been here long enough know that I don't generally care if it is sweep the floor day or not. I drop it down and eventually I'll get to it. Um, but yes, that is a quite, quite nice. And I think that might be better in terms of trying to get, yeah, that, that is gonna be a lot better in terms of getting it into the pot. Right, before I do anything else, Let's have a look. Uh, if it is flat mites, which I don't know because I've never experienced, they don't seem to behave in a way that spider mites do. So I saw some webbing between kind of petioles of the leaves, but not, there's nothing on the leaves. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it's odd, but let's bring everything out that I'm going to be repotting. I don't know whether or not this one's rooted yet. I think one of these things might need to stay in because it might not be ready just yet, which is <laughs> this thing right here. Um, and it is kind of very much a flying from the, oh no, there is a couple of tiny roots on there, which I'm not going to deal with kind of potting this up right now because it needs a bit more than that. But that is the Syngonium Chiapens. And I've got like a one, two, three, three nodes. Did it activate on any of the higher up ones? No, it did it on the lower one, which is fine. I think most people would prefer that, but eh, it's all right. It'll do what it needs to do. So this is the plant that I thought was gonna root out better. And it really, really hasn't, which is really impressive considering well, there's even a tiny bit of rot on that one massive aerial route. Uh, how about this one here? Mm, no, I think that's healthy. Is it healthy? No, it's not. So what I'm gonna do now is as I've got these that are already sterilized, that can come off and the rest of it is fine. So this is a Philodendron Paraiso Veridae. And anybody that's grown them in terms of kind of how much they root out, which is ridiculous, that, is all I've got in terms of that being rooting in there for about two or three months now, which horrendous. The tenue or the philodendron tenue that I showed you a moment ago, that's probably about a month. So a pathetic, really surprising at the same time. But let me not ruin the... Why am I blocking again? Oh, wow. Syngonium chipens. <gasps> Fluey, coldy brain is never good. This is even worse. I mean, look at look at the roots on that one. That is a pathetic. And granted, this one has got the growing tip. This is another Paraiso Veridae as well. 
but anybody that's grown them and they know how leggy they grow and these are going to get potted up together because oh, I don't even know if I want this plant in my collection anymore but um, the other one is still doing something. I've got none of the variegation back. So, and I know there's a lot of advice on kind of how to bring it back. At this point, I don't know if I care, but I should tell you something. But right, so let me I pop this onto here, pop this back in here, and I will change the water on this and give this a proper clean, just because I don't know what those mites might have been. Uh, to be fair, I might even reclaim this back and just give it a bigger uh, vasey type container just because it'd be nice to have this uh, waterer back. Okay, so before anything else, I need to mix up some soil and I don't think I've mixed up soil with you guys for a very long time now. So I thought let's use this opportunity. Also, I'm feeling like death. And I don't know, if, does anybody else do this? If you're feeling a bit like, as long as you can kind of move around and you're not like languishing in bed, going, I can't deal with the day because I've got a cold, which is uh, completely fine. <laughs> Uh, but you know, when you start feeling a tiny bit better, does anybody kind of gravitate back towards planty chores? Because it kind of helps, I don't know, it helps me kind of like switch off everything else and kind of like, it's my little healing zone. Is anybody else like that? Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, it, oh, this is, so, <laughs> Coco mm -hmm. Um and let me see what else I'm gonna mix in. And by the way, I've been doing this for so long now, um, play it by ear. So there are some worm castings. I love a bit of worm poo, I do. Um, right, let's I pop some of that in there. About, ah, it's good enough. It, this is literally how I do most of my mixes. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. I'm, let me know if you're like me with this one because, ugh. And I was, I was that YouTuber when I was starting, I need to put like a third of this and a quarter of this. I'm just like, how do you measure? Like I had to do that for that video and actually kind of like go, okay, normally I just like fill it out and let's do the measuring thing. And I, I, I cook way too much generally. I love good food. And it's the same as trying to get a cook. Like I do this with my mum. I did this with my grand before she died. Anybody, I mean, Mediterraneans are like this, but I'm assuming hearing stories from other people and other cultures as well, I think this is most people. Trying to get recipes off matriarchs of the family or patriarchs, depending on who's cooking. Um, and you're just like, ha, ha, a recipe? And they're just like, well, you know, you add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I'm just like, what's a little bit? I don't know, your little bit is different from my little bit. I, I, I have not been doing this for decades. And then yes, they have to kind of tell you roughly how much it is and you can kind of go from there. But my soil mixes is the same, really. So I'm just a little bit like, mm, just add it in and if it works, it works. And I vaguely remember what I did last time. But yes, coffee because, mm, Right, so that was, see flippy brain, my brain has switched off already. What was that, worm castings, worm poop. And then, no, no, not this. Oh, what's this? Oop. Aha, activated charcoal, always, always, always good. Add a bit in. Probably a bit more than I wanted to put in there, but maybe it's okay. It won't harm it, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Right, let's have a look. Ooh, yes, I've got another little amendment that I'm gonna put in here just because I've got loads of it. Normally I wouldn't, but like when I've got too much of something, I'm just like, eh, you know what, you can go in as well. So, some lecker. How that much? Good enough. And then before I add the very final thing, I'm gonna give it a bit of a mixy mix. Mixy mix. Okay. 
So what else have I got handy? Ooh, yes, let's do that. Uh, we've got some uh, coconut chunks, some a uh, bigger coconut chunks. So let me just slightly break them up a bit. Cocoa husk, basically. Right. Anybody else get these really like compressed, like blocks of cocoa chunks? And it's just like, how do you take these out without like ripping your fingers to shreds? But there we go. That'll do something. I've heard a lot of good things about cocoa fiber. Anybody use cocoa fiber? I, I've been wanting to use it for a while, but I know from everybody, a, it can be quite tricky to find it in the UK from what I hear, but B, even when you do find it, it can be super expensive. So it's one of those ingredients that I'm just like, is it worth the hype before I kind of pay for it or not? Like I was given, it was an event like a while back in the summer now, um, and I was given, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. So this is the thing, like with some of these materials that like tend to be a bit more, not necessarily a flash in the pan, but they don't stick around, at least in my corner of the internet, I might've missed it, but not Pon and not Lekka, but the other one that was like little black rocky things, and I can't remember what it's called now. It's, it's not Hydroton, is it? I don't know. It's the one that was used originally for aquariums. You know what I'm talking about, hopefully. But I've got a bag of that somewhere and I haven't even tried it yet, but I don't know, like it involves, involves me learning a new substrate and I don't have the time right now. I do miss the slight olden days where I had all of the energy in the world to try and experiment with absolutely everything. But these days I'm just like, I'll experiment with one thing. I'm too busy to do all of it, but it's good. I'll leave that, I'll leave that to the full-time YouTubers who kind of do this full-time and um, yeah, they've got, they've got the time to do this. I'm trying to run another business at the same time. I mean, don't get me wrong, if I ever get to the point where YouTube can support me enough, I'm more than happy to pull back a bit on my other business. Um, but I'm not a big enough account really for that at the moment, so. It's quite nice to be able to experiment though, I find. So that's what the mix is looking at like right now. So uh, let's do the, <laughs> the messiest bit for last, basically. I might do that off camera because I need to put a mask on. And hopefully the people must have realized by now when I said I need to put a mask on what I was gonna add in. You might be able to tell now that there's a lot more white in this. So yes, I added in perlite. And I think I'm gonna call it a day in terms of the mix. This is what I'm gonna do. Right. Let's get to potting up some of these propagations, shall we? Mm, which one do I want to start with? I want to start off with the one that's not pissing me off, basically. So, let me bring this up, because I don't understand why I keep taking it down. Pop that in the bottom. Now that, before anybody asks, this kind of les fake kind of like, shove these things here and shove these things there. Is it because I've got a cold? Possibly it's agitating it a bit more, but at the same time, I'm generally a bit like this. I don't tend to baby my plants, really. Um, I tend to be a bit more cognizant of the drama queens, but that is pretty much all that I do. Putting it in there to make sure that all the roots are below the soil level. And then just adding in whilst I drop soil everywhere. I was gonna do the thing, cause I bought one of those um, tops. I don't know what they're called. You know, the square things with the little clippy things on the corners, so you don't make a mess. Ah. I was that child. I'm just like, I don't care. It's fine. I'll clear this up anyway, as I said in a bit. So it will be fine, but yeah. And without too much ado, Tap, 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 tap. Just to make sure that all of the soil is between all of the lovely little roots. Right, okay. Uh, I'll add a tiny bit more on top. 
I may have gone a bit ham on the perlite and the aeration on these, but mine tend to be a bit denser in the past, but I've never gone for something that's this light. So I'm willing to give it a try and see how it's going. My other one of these is now growing in semi-hydro with my kind of chunky, chunky? Yeah, coarse semi-hydro mix from Soil Ninja. And it's doing quite well because I actually found this plant really, really thirsty. Now, the interesting thing with this, which I've never done before. Yes. That's my shock a few people because I do have a spare one handy. And I think I might have been leaving it for this specific reason. Ta-da! Mas pole. Isn't that a shock for me? People <laughs> that have been here. See, I just blew off a spider now, which was right next to where those other plants were in that water propagation. So I don't know. Because I also don't know if what I saw was just spider babies. Because it's, it's that time of the year, I think, where spider babies happen because they looked more like spiders and they looked like mites and they were small. So I don't know, but is that good enough? Yes, I think that might be good enough there just to kind of pop that in and we'll see. Because I think this was one of the plants that everybody kind of told me. No, I think that's a wrong one. It needs to maybe be there. Why is that buckling? Oh, don't make my life difficult when I'm not well. Mm, that's good enough, I think. Yes, that is a better angle. Does anybody else do this? And I don't know how else I'm gonna describe this. You put a moss pole on near aerial roots on the stem, and then the plant decides, no, I'm not gonna touch on there. I'm gonna to go to the arrow roots away from the moss pole. I'm just like, can you just not be this difficult, please? Um, but my solution for that is just put more sphagnum moss around the kind of arrow root and just hope for the best. Um, but yes, Velcro-y plant ties. Whoever came up with this as an idea, A, simple solution, be genius. Some of the best kind of inventions or kind of solutions are the most simplest ones. Again, in a previous li life, and I don't think a lot of you might know this, when I was still living in London, I used to work for a product innovation company and I used to help them with their marketing, the digital marketing again there and their website. Like I've kind of been in this industry that I'm in now for a while. But I learned a lot of really interesting things from kind of product designers, things that I would have never have known had I have not have worked for that company. And I always think that's, that's valuable. Right, you're seeing me doing something here with a janky support stick that is supporting the moss pole, just purely because I know that if I want to extend it, I can. But for right now, it's doing what it needs to do. And this one is ready to go and it is attached and everything. And let's see, because the reason why I said people were suggesting I use a moss pole is because people said it, you'll probably start getting much bigger leaves. Um, people with the people that I tend to see that give me those comments for like the bigger leaves on some of the plants that I struggle with. So I'm thinking this one, I'm thinking the Philodendron gigas tend to mainly be based in Australia. So I think my downfall is something that works better in Australia. So I wonder if I ever moved to Australia or like tried to grow plants in Australia, whether or not I would do better. I don't know. But um, I'm sure like you guys, uh, everybody that's based in Australia, you've got beautiful climate as far as I'm aware. Um, and I say this from somebody who also comes from a very warm country generally. And I also know that not all parts of Australia are warm. I know that's a vast generalization. But yeah, sorry. This video is gonna be all over the place. If you haven't already noticed, but my brain is, is not raining today, so we're just going with it. <laughs> right, shall we move on to the problem child? And by problem child, I mean the Paris of our day. Ugh, swear, the grief that this plant is giving me. I do get why so many people went off it, to be fair. 
Um, and I was like one of everybody else at the moment going, oh, I'm willing to give it a try. You don't ever need to take my advice, but with this one, maybe just heed my warning and like, good luck. And I'm sure you can do better than I did, but I don't know. Um, there's, a, there's better options. What's the, the Jose Bueno? Much better than this one, but there we go. Pop that in. This is the irony with some of these plants that I don't care about, and I'm so super like, meh, do what you want to do with your life, basically. Um, tend to do really well for me. The ones I don't care about. The ones that I really care about, generally, out of spite, they will just die on me. Just for no good reason. They're like, no, we do not have the willingness to live. Um, now let's put the, the awkward one in first. Get this, sometimes when you get the awkward like root system and I'm just like, how do I put you in without destroying you? That one's in. Bury that deep, deep. You can see even with this one where I'm dealing with cuttings, it's still going to be that awkward kind of growth pattern that this plant generally has. I'm pretty sure I've destroyed some roots now whilst shoving it in, but meh. Um, I also know with this one, when it does root out, it won't care. It grows like a weed. Right. Oops. Everywhere. Right, that is incorporated. Is this getting a moss pole? Hell nah. Cannot be bothered. Because I, I think from what I've seen from other people, even if you give this a moss pole, it's still leggy as all... Yeah, so no, this is, this is okay. But do you see what, do you, do you see what I mean? Look at that, look at that internodal space there. And the patio, oh. And the non-variegated leaves. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know that you can get some variegation on this. Again, I'm looking for those mite things, but I don't, th I don't think there were mites, which is hysterical. Let's, let's bring out the jeweler's loop again, because I can be a bit paranoid. Thing is, mites don't really worry me these days. Like, in kind of my dread level, the way that it goes, fungus gnats right at the bottom. I don't care at this point. I've been dealing with fungus gnats for too long and I'm just like, <laughs> I've managed to eradicate them more or less. That's probably why I don't care about them so much. Then it's spider mites for me. I'm just a bit like, eh, it's inconvenient, but I, I really do enjoy my predatory mites for that. So, and they work really well for me at least. So then it's thrips and then it's mealybugs. Cause the mealybugs, I'm just like, not again. Not another plant that's got bloody mealybugs. You can see my plants and the people that have been here for years know how long I've been whinging about mealybugs in here. Have I ever truly got rid of them? No. Can you see too much of an issue in my collection? Yeah, it's fine. Um, but they're still annoying. So let's have a look. Am I seeing anything on here? No, absolutely not. What about the backs? Is that moving? Is it not? Mm, maybe? Don't know. It's fine. They'll get treated. Uh, to be fair, a little update as well, like, you know, the little satchels. Where, let me see if I can grab one. Uh, these ones, which were the predatory insects, the deal that I got from Lady Bur Ladybird Plant Care, um, which were the predatory mites for the larval stages of thrips, which I've put everywhere because they were such a good deal. 
Um, and I was hoping that might avoid me having to get my kind of multi mite, the ones that will do with most things, including spider mites. But I wasn't thinking this is usually the time of the year as well that I tend to get those satchels of the multi mite because it will also deal with spider mites at the same time. So I don't have to worry. Uh, so what did I have to do recently? I had to buy some more satchels of that. So um, my plants look like they've got tea bags all over them at the moment. It is hysterical. Um, so, you yeah. know, um, but yeah, that is now also a potted up and I'm trying to think. So that's, that's the little tasks that I had to do. But I was looking at this the other day and I haven't done a bit of an update for you all in a while. So I'm wondering whether or not I just give you a bit of a quick update on a couple of things that I can kind of easily pick up and show you. Um, and we can just have a quick chat about them. Let me do that. Right, and now that I've got you all a bit higher again, Let's have a look at some updates, shall we? Hmm. So, little update on the potential root rot or not root rot after the holidays. So this is my El Choco Red, the tea bags that I was talking about earlier on. And there is a new growth point that's coming in right there and a little one down there. And this one I think struggled the most with the root rot. I lost, this had originally got five leaves. I'm down to two, I might potentially lose this one. I don't know if I'm gonna lose that one as well. So this is one that I do wanna move into soil. Mm, this one might get done now, to be fair. Because I've got the stuff here and I'm in that frame of mind. So I'm gonna put this down and do that in a minute. Probably off video, but it's gonna get done. Uh, let's think what else. Oh yes, I will show you another one. So I don't know if I ever showed the fact that I got the, was it red spot, pink spot, syngonium a while back and it was a relatively established one and it wasn't that expensive from my local garden center. It wasn't one that I always wanted to get necessarily and it did really well, but I think it rooted out, it rotted out at some point. And these were all the little cuttings that I took from it before it completely died of rot. And I propagated them and they've all been cut and put into here at the moment. It's doing okay. Is this one of the slowest syngoniums I've got? Possibly, but it's okay. Oh, I do have a little update that I can show you. Hold on. Okay, I finally have a new leaf. God, that sounded a bit screechy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Voice is not great at the moment. But yeah, a new leaf from, why am I blocking? This is, the GG Nigrolaminum uh, Anthurium. And I've been waiting for it to get a single new leaf since I first got it. And if you're the one that I swapped with this plant, look, finally. Uh, other two are still doing well, but yeah, I thought this was uh, super exciting. It went really fast and it uh, huge. So looking forward to this a growing season with this one, because again, for the people that have been here for a while, I've had like three different inflorescences on this. First leaf. Ooh. Another new leaf situation, let me show you. <coughs> Look, hey, this is the Philodendron Luxuriance that I just recently bought. Remember I said there was a new leaf coming in? So beautiful, so beautiful. It's still okay, it's still okay, it's still thirsty. I get, I get what they mean about the thirsty and I keep watering going, oh my God, am I like gonna give you root rot? But so far? It's okay, I think. Well, it seems happy. Mm -mm. Also to say, I have heard all of you that wanted or this, I'm glad that, that this or that video kind of was to everybody's liking. And I did hear about, I think that the predominant gist that I got from that is, there's a few people that want a this or that for anthuriums, which I can definitely do. And there's an even more specific group that want a this or that for the kind of trailing or the kind of hanging anthuriums, and I can do that. It might be a much longer video, anthurium this or that, um, and then I'll have a section for the kind of more pendant things. In full transparency, I've only got one, two, three kind of hanging anthuriums that I can compare to each other, but hopefully that'll be good enough. Ooh, another little one that I can show you really quickly. This was a multi, a seeding that I did or a multi planting that I did for um, some of my seedlings from a while back. And I think this, 
little seedling that's looking like it's getting a very, very long pointed leaf with some of the silveriness in there. I think that might have been one of the crosses that I did with my Crystallinum and my Unknown Hybrid. And by Unknown Hybrid, I mean, we think it's a hybrid. It's the one that I originally thought it was the Metallicum, which has those slightly longer leaves. But it seems to be that all of these are getting similar kind of like pointy long leaves. I don't know what happened with that one. Um, and it got that damage there. I think it might have been a little slug because that happens in this space. But yeah, remains to be seen. And this is the largest I've ever got some of those seedlings to get in my care. But you can see that really, really pointy leaf tip basically. So well, let's see how that one goes. The next one, and I don't think I've ever showed this before, is my strawberry ice, I think is the syngonium. And you can see some of it there. I would have not necessarily gone out of my way to get this and I can see what I mean now about people in the site, it's just a bit muddy. But very, very slow growing syngonium, at least in my experience. Uh, would I recommend it? I don't know. And I wouldn't have normally got it, but I just saw it at like that specific garden center that I was talking about. At a relatively good price, I think it was just in the double digits. So I'm just like, man, let's give it a try. It's okay. Mother. Also for the people tagging along for the like more veggie kind of and seedling growing stage, that is the seedlings from, what are they called? Why am I blocking? Coleuses, rainbow mix. Are they too close together? Yes. Do I need to separate them out? Yes. Is that gonna happen today? Probably not. Maybe tomorrow though, maybe tomorrow. Also doing exceptionally well on the peppers. So the peppers are doing really, really well. The very strong grow light and the fan that keeps moving them around is doing wonders for like giving these really strong, sturdy stems. Uh, we're not ready yet to put these anywhere at the moment in terms of the UK because the weather is still not warm enough even for like my unheated polytunnel, but soon, hopefully. Also, this is looking a bit thirsty, I need to water this, but these are the tomato seedlings that we saw last time. It's not been that long. Um, and I forgot, annoyingly, I forgot, I wasn't feeling well already at this point when I did the repotting of these. So the roots are pretty much down here from the original seedling, or maybe about there. Um, the rest of it was the stem being buried in just to kind of give it more to grow, but these are probably gonna be outgrowing this in a bit as well. And I'm just like, it's not ready, I can't put you in the ground yet. <laughs> so you need to slow your roll, and definitely not in here. Like I'm running out of space in here. Like, you know how I never have enough space for extra house plants? <laughs> Try growing vegetables in betwixt all of that as well. Mm. I think that might be a good place to wrap it up, potentially, I'm kind of looking at, <laughs> this has been filming for a while. Um, Apologies for the frenetic video, or hopefully you've enjoyed, because I know some people wanted a bit more of these chatty ones with me. Because I know people said that you could put them in the background and get on with your own stuff as well. Let me know if this is something you enjoy watching, because if it is, these are kind of slightly easier videos for me to kind of put together for you all, basically. So let me know and I can do a few more of these along the way, basically. Thank you for bearing with me and my stuffy like nose and probably sounding very nasal at the moment um, and potential kind of like cuts all the time so I can hack up a lung. Um, but yes, losing my strain, train of thought again. <laughs> uh, be nice to me in the comments. In this <laughs> but I'm not firing on all cylinders at the moment. Yes, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I haven't scared you away and I'll just see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, bye.